Hey folks, there's another sty story. Boy, people are going to, if you get tired of sty stories, just tell me, because it's going to be a long winter. I mean, it's, we're talking, it's January 15th, you know, and I don't know how much I'm going to get outdoors between now and retirement, which is mid-April, <laughs> so. So, a lot of indoor videos. Um, but if you get tired of sty stories, you just let me know. And I'll back off. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. Sty just can't shut up, you know. Okay, this sty story um, is going to be titled, What a Ride. Now this is a, about an incident <clears throat> when I worked for a drilling outfit out in northwestern Montana. I was driving water truck at the time. Now we are drilling in the fall of the year and things were starting to freeze up. And we got up to the rig for this one shift, and I was surprised. Um, we had this huge water tank, open top water tank, that you put this, it's, it's a fibrous material, you dump it in the water tank with the water, and there's a mixer that just keeps it mixed, and it turns the water almost gelatinous. Um, and that's used for lubricating the drill stem. Excuse me. Drill, the drill stem and the um, drill bit. Pump it down the stem, it lubricates the drill bit so that that diamond bit doesn't wear out so fast. Gotta keep that water tank full. And you gotta keep that mix in it so that it does its job. So, that's the reason for the water truck. There, we never had water on our drill sites. So we had to haul water in. Well, about two and a half miles from this rig, there was a artesian spring. There was a nice pool. Um, I'd say it was about Oh, four, about four feet deep and probably 12 feet across, right on the mountainside. And there was a, they had taken a caterpillar and cleared a access, kind of an access road right to that little pool. But it was steep, it was a steep devil. And you couldn't drive up to the pool, you had to drive, there was like a T at the bottom. You drove past that little access road, and then you backed the truck all the way up that hill until you got to that pool. Well, the truck was sitting at a steep angle when it was at the pool. Once you got there, you pull the pipe off the truck, this a uh, uh, suction line, and you throw it in the pool, and you fire up the pump, which was gas operated, and a little gas engine with a small little gas tank on it. You fire that pump up, and you start pumping water up, and you've got a discharge line going into the tank of the truck. Well, this truck was a big dual axle, heavy truck, had a, they say it was a 600 gallon, I figure it was about 450 gallon um, water tank on it. And you fill that water tank up until the water reached the inlet port on the top. Being that the truck's at an angle, when it reached that inlet port, when you were on level ground, the tank was about three quarters full or more. Well, so, we get up to the rig, and there's ice on top of the 
on top of the water tank. And so I told the driller, I said, well, I said, I hate like heck that, I said, we're going to have to chop that ice. And he says, let's get to it. So we both took axes and we chopped the ice, broke it into big chunks and threw the chunks out. Well, now our water tank is lower than it should be. So I had to run to get water. Gotta have a sip of coffee. So I jump in the water truck and I head to that water source. I get there and I can't believe it's starting to snow and it's just colder than the devil. I back up that hillside. I get the truck right up to that, right up to the pond. I get out of the truck. The, the truck's not running. I've got the truck in gear. I've got the emergency brake on. Because it is, it's a steep grade. And I throw a chalk block under the back tire. Because once that thing's full of water, that's a lot of weight. I don't want that thing starting to roll down that hill. Okay. Then you get out of the truck. You go to the back, you grab that suction line off the truck, throw it in the pool, hook it up, fire up the engine, and you start pumping into the tank. Well, I get the discharge line in the tank, go start the pump, and sure enough, she starts sucking water, and I can just hear it roaring into that big tank. I go around, I'm up on the bed of the truck and you've got just maybe six or eight inches down each side of that tank that you can put the toes of your boots on and shimmy up and down the sides of that tank. Well, I shimmied up to the back of the truck and I'm coming around the tank to where the motor's at because once you see that water start to come out of that discharge on the top or the filler cap. You see the water start to come out, you shut that pump down and you get a little bit of splash over nothing much, a couple gallons maybe. Well, I would step around that motor and I'm gonna lean up against the back of the tank and have myself a smoke. Well, when I step around the motor onto that little flat part of decking along the tank that pump was leaking and while I was doing the discharge pipe water had run down that that bed of that truck and froze so when I stepped around boom Sty took off for a ride slid all the way down the length of that bed face first right into the back of the cab of the truck spun around came off the truck and where did I land it was all flat ground except where I landed there was a rock about the size of a basketball and half of that rock is sticking out of the ground I landed on that rock right in the small of my back. It bent me in half right over that rock. I woke up. Here's the odd thing. When we get there and we get out of the truck, we have to write on a log what time we got there. And then when we get back in the cab, we write in the log when we were done and heading back to the rig. And then when we get to the rig, we write in the log when we arrived. Because we got to keep this log for the company about whatever we're doing, whenever. So, so I knew what time I had backed up to that pond. When I came to laying on the ground, I'd say from 
my waist down. I had about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch of ice on me. When I moved my legs, you could hear all the ice breaking off of me. And I could hear a motor running. Then I realized that motor is the pump. And I could hear the splashing. And I lifted my head and looked around. Everything was sheer ice. I wasn't thinking about how long I'd been laying there. I just, I managed to get up and boy was I in pain. I was in a lot of pain. I got up and managed to work myself back to the motor and then shut the pump down. I pulled the discharge line out of the pond, got it back on the truck, slid it on the truck. It had a little rack it sat in. Worked my way very carefully to the cab. Had a heck of a time getting the driver's door open because it was froze shut. Here that water had overflowed the tank, run down the tank, down the bed of the truck. It went over the roof of the cab and the whole cab was encased in a half to an inch of solid ice. I beat on the door handle a couple of times and the ice broke off and I managed to get a hold of the door handle and with some serious yanking I managed to get the door open. I got in that truck and fired it up right away and figured it's going to take a half hour just to thaw this truck out. So I got the truck running with the defroster on full blast and it took almost 45 minutes for that um, windshield to thaw out. I couldn't get out to scrape the windshield because my back, it was a combination of pain and numbness. I didn't know if I could actually stand up and walk. So I didn't dare try to get out of the truck to scrape the ice off of the windshield. Once the ice was off the windshield and the wipers were finally cleaning off the windshield, I could see down that hill. That water had run down that hill and it turned that whole hillside, that roadway, into nothing but a big sheet of ice. And it went to within about 25, maybe 30 feet before the T where I would have to turn. Now, if you don't make the turn and you go through that T, it's about a 300 foot ride down a steep, steep incline of nothing but stumpage where they had logged and they had left stumps that were three some four feet tall. If you go off that, yeah, it's a disaster. I mean, it, it'd probably kill you. So, I, no chains on the truck, so I couldn't count on the chains slowing me down. But I knew I had to get back to the race. So I put that truck in gear and I decided if I head off to the right, there's an embankment with, with a lot of loose gravel. And if I could get the passenger side front wheel and the passenger side rear duals, into that soft gravel, that soft sand, it would slow me down enough that I wouldn't go off the end. I got over in that stuff and it was still a heck of a ride. What a ride it was. One moment I'd be sliding just uncontrolled, uncontrollably and then finally that gravel would break loose and the and it would get some traction, it would slow the truck right down. And it'd be fine for another 20, 30 feet, and then all of a sudden that truck would take off again. 
<coughs> I got down to the T without losing control. I managed to turn that truck down the road and take that two, two and a half mile drive back up to the drill rig. When I got up to that drill rig, I pulled in with the truck, backed the truck up to the water tank, and I, I, I just couldn't be confident that I could get out of that truck and walk. So there I sat. I sat in that truck, sat in that truck. Finally, I heard the rig shut down, and the driller came down. And he comes up to the truck and he goes, what in the world are you doing, man? You were gone long enough. And that's when I looked at my watch and figured out the amount of time it took me to get down that hill and then get back up to the ray. Subtract that, and I was laying, passed out on the ground for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm lucky I didn't die from hypothermia. I had the chills, extremely had the chills. Fortunately, I was wearing good heavy wool pants, good wool blend long johns, and I think that's what saved me. Well, the driller helped me get out of the truck and get up to the rig, to our rig shack, where we had a big coal stove that we always kept white hot. I sat by that coal stove for two hours, and my back just kept getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And finally, the end of shift came. The driller managed to manage the rig without my help to the end of the shift. We got in our work truck and we headed off the mountain. And he kept telling me, I do not believe you're going to be able to work. He says, you're lucky today was our last shift. Because we worked, um, typically we worked four on and we had four off. So he says, you got four days, but I don't think you're going to be able to work our next go. I said, oh yeah, I'll be able to work. Well, I did go back to work. I probably shouldn't have because I've had back issues ever since then. My back and my left hip have always been an issue ever since that accident. Um, there's times my back will go out and I'll crash out. I mean, I could hit the floor, actually, and everybody, oh, here, let us help you get you up. No, don't touch me. Just leave me alone, and in 10, 15 minutes, I'll be able to get up. I'll be fine, and that's literally what happens. There's some nerves in there that just will get pinched, and boom, I'll, my legs give out on me. So I, I, got a, I got that in the back of my mind all the time, that, that you know, my legs could give out, um, but it's only short term. It's not... It, and I, they said they could fix that by fusing my lower back. I said, no, you're not doing that. I, no, I don't want it. But what a ride. I mean, sliding down that truck and then kissing the back of that cab and hitting the ground. When I got up on the site, when I, when I rolled over and got up and I looked at that rock, I could not believe that I did not break my back. Um, it, that was a miracle that I did not break my back. But that was one of Stye's um, adventures. <laughs> uh, quite the experience, quite the experience. Um, I got a keen respect for slippery slopes. <laughs> ever since then, so, well, there you go, there's another style story for you, hope you enjoyed it, um, like I always have been saying, I, my list is a mile long, so, um, we'll get on with more style stories in the future, and we'll probably jump to a couple topic videos, and we'll just keep moving on. As always, thanks for tagging along, and you all have a very nice day. Bye-bye.